Don't fall, don't fall. Hey everybody, it's Katrina and thank you so much for clicking. So a few weeks ago, I asked on my Instagram if there was any content you all wanted to see and I got a request for some beginner tips on how to get started on Poshmark. So for those of you who don't know, Poshmark is an online marketplace where you can buy and sell things from new to used and you can find clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, handbags, makeup, and even home decor on there. And I've been using it for a couple years and I mainly use it to sell my old clothes and shoes and handbags, but I've also sold makeup on there and even some cups and stuff like that. So if you're looking to declutter and you don't want to toss your things or um, let them go to waste and also make some money. I think Poshmark or any other online marketplace app is a really great place to go. I personally use Poshmark because as I was kind of browsing through some of the selling apps, I found that Poshmark is one that doesn't seem very high stakes where you need to make things all aesthetic and pretty looking and people are still willing to buy it. And I feel like there's a good range of like young people to older people on there and so you might not have like the hippest clothing but they still might sell. So I'm going to split this video into three different sections. So the first section is just going to be all about the logistics, how the app works, some basic info that you should know before getting started. And then I'm going to give some tips and pointers about how to post and how to take your pictures. And then I'm going to end with some general tips for selling, how to get you know better reviews and just how to make it a more fun and less wasteful process. One more thing before I get started, I use Poshmark as a kind of background way to get rid of my stuff and make some money. It's not something that I'm on every day um, and I'm not using it to like generate a lot of money. So there are some people who actually, their main source of income is from Poshmark. And so if you're looking to resell and really make big profits on Poshmark, there are tons of other videos that you can find to talk more about how you can do that. But for this video, it's just going to be like basic. You want to use it to sell your stuff, make some money, and declutter. So the first thing to know is how much Poshmark is going to take as the middle person. So for all items listed $15 and under, Poshmark is going to take $2.95. For anything over $15, they're going to take 20%, which is a pretty hefty amount. So just keep that in mind. And if you want, there are apps that will take a little bit less. So you can definitely venture out into those if those work better for you. So for shipping, the buyer pays an additional cost for shipping. So all you need to worry about as a seller is once an item is sold, Poshmark is going to email you the shipping label. You're going to print that out, pack up your item, and then just bring it to the post office. One of my favorite parts about Poshmark is that I'm able to reuse my old packaging. So I save up all of my boxes, envelopes that come into the mail, bubble wrap and everything, and I use that to pack my Poshmark orders. So another thing to know is that buyers can offer and then you can counter offer back as a seller. I would always say to list your item a little bit higher because people tend to offer a lower price and you can decide whether you want to accept counter offer or decline and then they can do the same too. So I would say don't be too greedy because there are some times where I've just tried to stretch that extra dollar and then they end up walking away and I'm like dang it I should have just taken it. Buyers can also bundle several items together that way you can ship together and then they can just pay once for shipping but one thing to note is that you want to make sure that your bundle is not over five pounds because if it's over five pounds you'll be charged for overweight shipping and the seller has to be responsible for that and it's an expensive amount. So on on all of my descriptions, I try to put, you can bundle items, but bundles cannot weigh over five pounds or the buyer will have to cover the overweight shipping. So as a seller, you can also give special discounts on bundles. So on Poshmark, there are several options. So you can give like 10% off a bundle of three or more items or 20% off a bundle of five or more items. And then once buyers put stuff into their bundle, they'll automatically get that discount once they hit the amount that you've set. So another thing to note is that you cannot edit or delete comments on Poshmark and most conversations are public and they're just on the actual item posts themselves and you can just comment back and forth. But if you do want to talk to just one person like privately, you can have conversations through the bundles. So if you go into their bundle or if they go into your bundle, you all can have a conversation there. And then lastly, the important part is how you get paid. So for me, I connect my Poshmark account to my checking account and then I do direct deposits. But you can also keep the money in there and spend it on Poshmark as well. So it's just kind of like Venmo where it stays in there until you decide to withdraw it and put it into your bank account. And you can also use that credit to purchase things on Poshmark. 
So this section is gonna be all about tips for your photos and your postings. So I haven't done this for all of mine because I get a little bit lazy, but if you want to really optimize the performance of your posts and hopefully get more sales, I would say that the ideal picture is taken in natural lighting, has a bright and plain background, preferably like a white wall or something like that, is on either a hanger, a model, or a mannequin, and has a lot of different photos. So they allow you to upload eight photos and I would say take advantage of all of those spots. First, you should upload a picture of the front, the entire front, then the back, a close up. If there's a tag, you would wanna get a tag in there. Um, if there's a price tag and it's brand new, you should take a picture of the price tag. If there are any damages or defects, discoloring, you wanna make sure you're explicit with that. I would post that in the photos as well. And then if you have a measuring tape, something that you can do to go that extra mile is to put the measuring tape on the piece of clothing so that people know how long it is, how wide it is, how tall it is, whatever, because that's often a question that is asked and that would save you the time to have to pull out that clothing and then post it again. Another tip is if it's a new item and it's still on sale, you can also go to the website and screenshot the actual product post and then put that on there as well. Um, and a lot of people also screenshot like the product description and like, what the materials are made out of and everything like that. So you can use what's available. You don't have to produce all the pictures yourself. I think it's always helpful to try on the piece of clothing and then take a picture of it as well because I think if you kind of think about it like if you're buying clothes and you can't try it on how would you kind of inform your purchase you would probably want to see it on to see how it looks like right and then you can gauge like what their body type is like what my body type is like and then see if it's something that you think would work for you since there's no exchanges and there's no returning if it doesn't fit you well so when it comes to the title of your post you don't have a lot of letter space but I would try your best to put the color of the piece, the item description, so if it's a tank top, put a tank top, and if you know the brand, put the brand there, especially if it's a well-known brand. And then you can just choose, you know, whatever category it fits. Now, if you're trying to sell something like a cup or something that doesn't quite fit in, you can always just put it into like accessories. That's what I usually do. Just throw it in the closest category you can find, but don't beat yourself up if you can't find the exact category that fits your product. So after you've chosen the categories, the colors, the sizing, all of that, you have to type your description box. And here you have more space, and so this is where I would really give all the information you can that would be helpful. So for here, you wanna talk about the quality. Has it been worn three times? Never been worn? Brand new with tag? Um, tried on but never left the house? Maybe you bought it from someone on Poshmark, haven't worn it and are reselling because it doesn't fit. Here, I also try to be a little bit transparent with why I'm selling it, right? Maybe I say, oh, I got the wrong size, I bought an extra, and you can also give a styling tip too, right? So maybe you have a great pair of shoes and you can say, this is perfect for dressing up or dressing down, wearing at work or for a night out. Um, just to kind of help people envision like when they would wear it and how they could wear it. I think something that's really helpful, especially if you have pictures of yourself wearing it, is to also put your measurements if you're comfortable. So sometimes I put my height and then my typical like pants or shirt size just so that people can kind of gauge to see if it's something that would fit them as well. And something that I've been seeing recently is that people tag for exposure. And so you can think of it kind of like hashtags on Instagram. So people just type in like tags and then they would just put like some relevant brands. This is also the place to just be clear. If you're open to offers, you can put open to reasonable offers, or if your price is firm and you're not looking to budge, you can also just be explicit and say price is firm. So one last thing about pricing is that there is a slot for you to put the original price and then your listed price. So I would say when in doubt, just put zero for your original price because that is something common. Like everybody puts zero and then people just see the listed price and that's fine. I would only suggest putting the original price if one, the price tag is on there, and two, if it's a really good deal that you're giving them. So if the original price is like $100 and you're selling it for $30, that might be a time where you wanna put the original price. So I'm gonna end with just some general tips and things that I've learned from using the app that will hopefully help you sell more. So first, I've seen some people say that the best way to kind of stay relevant and keep the traffic coming to your closet is to post every day or to post more frequently instead of like one day you just post like 20 items. I personally don't do this because I don't want to spend the time every day but if you feel like okay I can set an alarm and a lot maybe a few minutes each day to posting a different post I would spend one day taking all the pictures and then setting alarm and then posting something new every day. 
So my next tip is something I mentioned earlier, and it's to always just start at a higher listing price because people can offer and you can also decrease the price as it goes on. So if no one's buying something, you can drop the price and then it's gonna show like this item dropped 10% off, 20% off. So I would just always start a little bit higher so you can slowly, slowly drop, especially because if you're trying to send a private offer to all the people who liked your item, you need to decrease the price at least 10%, which can be a lot. So I would always just hike up the original price a little bit. My next tip is to be timely and responsive to people who are commenting. So usually the comments that I would get that require me to do something is, can you try this on and add a picture? Can you tell me like what's the lane? Once you get that notification, just answer it as soon as possible because people might be interested in it and the sooner you respond, they'll be like, oh, okay, maybe I like it. Just the other week, I sold a blanket. Um, this one mom said, oh, can you let me know what the back looks like? I sent the back. It was exactly what she was looking for and she bought it within 10 minutes. And so it really helps if you kind of catch them while they're still on the app. This next tip is not necessary, but it's something that I love to do and it's to include a little thank you note with your order. So in every package that I send out, I just write a little thank you note and sometimes if I have a little freebie or goodie, I'll just throw that in there too. So I've given things like free little necklaces or keychains that I found and a lot of people have mentioned that in their little love notes, which is like the Poshmark reviews that people can leave. So if you're looking to just kind of make somebody's day, you can always write a thank you note or give them a little something extra. This isn't really a tip, but it's also something just to be aware of is don't be alarmed if you get like a wave of followers or if you just start with followers already. Um, and don't feel like you need to follow everyone back or if someone likes your stuff, you need to like theirs back. Sometimes I'll go on and share people's stuff, but for the most part, I don't really worry too much about the notifications that I get. Another tip is to check out for the themed Poshmark parties. So you'll get a lot of notifications that like, oh, this sport clothes party is starting or Kate Spade party is starting. And for those theme parties, you can only add items that fit within the theme. Another thing you can do is create your own kind of bundle and sale system. So for example, over the holidays, I added little like gift emojis onto some of my listings. And then I created a new post that just said, add three items with the little gift emoji for $15. And so if people were to bundle those up, I would just give the offer of $15. This next tip is something that I've mentioned before, but it's so important and it's just to be extremely transparent and explicit with any kind of damages or defects or anything that might warrant someone to not be so happy with their product. So I've actually had a buyer return two of my items because I wasn't as explicit with how worn out the edges of the purse were. And I thought that I had mentioned it, but maybe I didn't talk about the extent to how much it was worn out. And so when something gets returned to you, it doesn't get removed off your page. It will still show that it's sold. So you have to repost that item if you wanna resell it. So I would just say to save everybody the trouble, be as explicit as you can so you don't have people giving you bad reviews or returning things. Another really important tip I have is to be patient. I think in the entire year I was in Massachusetts, I sold two items on Poshmark. And sometimes when I post things, I sell them within like 10 minutes. And so it's just really inconsistent and you never know, but don't lose hope, don't get too discouraged and just keep going at it. But if you feel like, all right, I don't want my clothes to be sitting here, it's okay to find other ways to declutter it. So I've given clothes from my Poshmark pile to my family, friends, my mom's coworkers, friends, and it also feels really good to just declutter. So don't feel like you have to sell on Poshmark or you can't get rid of this clothing somehow. So my last tip is just to have fun with it and don't take it too seriously. Um, don't feel like you need to have the most aesthetic pictures or the most perfect posts or thorough descriptions. Just be an honest, transparent, reliable, and responsive seller, and I think you'll be fine. I know it could be overwhelming, and I feel like I just like blasted you all with so much information, but I promise that once you get started on the app, it'll be pretty self-explanatory, and I feel like it's just gonna become muscle memory for you to just post those things. If you have any other tips or tricks that I missed, please leave them down below. I'm just a regular posture, and I have a lot to learn, so I would love to know if you have any other tips. If you have any other questions, you can also leave them down below. Or if you're getting started and you just want someone to hype you up and share your closet, you can leave your handle down there and I'll be sure to check it out. So that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.
Bye! Hey everybody! So before I leave, I just wanted to say that if you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram. I post there a lot more frequently and I'm really trying to interact with you all more and I have a much smaller following and so I really recognize and know everybody who's following me and so even if we haven't talked personally, thank you for being there with me. Um, I appreciate every single person who views, comments, likes, votes, anything. Thank you so much and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye!